right? Uh, one of the problems desktop has, I mean, ignoring all the purely market and getting free installs and making it just so that normal people, and by normal people I mean obviously non-technical people will just buy a machine and it just works. One of the things that none of the, the distributions have ever gotten right is application packaging, right? Um, and now somebody will say, hey, dpackage is way improved and much better than RPM, and that's not at all what I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about actual application writers that want to make a package of their application for Linux. And I've seen this firsthand with the other project I've been involved with, which is my Divelog application, right? Um, we make binaries for Windows and OS X. We basically don't make binaries for Linux. Why? Because making binaries for Linux desktop applications is a major fucking pain in the ass, right? You don't make binaries for Linux. You make binaries for Fedora 19, Fedora 20. Maybe there's even like RHEL 5 from 10 years ago. You make binaries for uh, Debian stable, well actually you don't make binaries for Debian stable because Debian stable has libraries that are so old that anything that was built in the last century doesn't work, right? But you might make binaries available for Debian whatever the code name is for, for unstable. And, uh, and even that is a major pain because, Christ, we had this small local flame fest just a couple of days ago. Um, Damien has these rules that you're supposed to use shared libraries, right? And if you don't use shared libraries, uh, getting your package in, like, is just painful. But using shared libraries is not an option when the libraries are experimental and the libraries are used by two people and one of them is crazy. So <laughs> every other day, some ABI breaks, right? So you actually want to just compile one binary and have it work. Preferably forever. And preferably across all the Linux distributions. And uh, I actually think distributions have done a horribly, horribly bad job. One of the things that I do in the kernel, and I have to fight this every single release, and I think it's sad, uh, we have one rule in the kernel. There is one rule. We don't break user space. Everything else is kind of a guideline. The whole security thing, it's a guideline that we shouldn't do stupid shit, right? But that's not a hard rule. People do stupid shit all the time. I don't get that upset. People break user space. I get really, really angry. I mean, I, this is something that is religious for me. You do not break user space. And even in the kernel, I, every single release, I have people saying, okay, I'm changing this ABI because it's cleaning stuff up. And I'm like, no, you're not changing that ABI because I will crush you, right? <laughs> uh, and, and actually, it's often okay to change ABI as long as nobody notices. But immediately when somebody notices, it's a bad thing. And this is like a big deal for the kernel. And I spend a lot of effort explaining to all the developers that this is a really, really important thing. And then all the distributions come in and they screw it all up because they break binary compatibility left and right. They update glibc and everything breaks. You, hey, you can recompile everything, right? That really seems to be the mindset quite often. It's like the glibc people say, it was a bug, look, here's the standard. It says you can't rely on that. Nobody cares. If it's a bug that people rely on, it's not a bug, it's a feature, right? <laughs> and uh, I won't even get into all the other libraries, but it's really sad when the most core library in the whole system is okay with breaking stuff. Uh, and, and as long as things improve and they fix the ABI. 
So that's my rant. And that's what I really fundamentally think needs to change for Linux to work on the desktop, because you can't have application writers do 15 billion different versions. And uh, I'm on record as saying that maybe Valve will actually save the Linux desktop. And it's actually not because I think games are important. I don't care. I don't play games. I think some people do, so games may be important. But the really important issue is, I guarantee you, Valve will not make 15 different binaries. And I also guarantee you that every single desktop distribution will care about Valve binaries. So the problem is Valve will build everything statically linked uh, and create huge binaries. And uh, that's kind of sad. But it's what you have to do right now. I would like, uh, I would like to come back to the topic of getting uh, application running everywhere on every distribution, uh, and compare it to the out of three modules in the kernel, where the rule yeah. is to um, get your uh, module in the in the kernel, merge in the kernel. Could we ask maybe the same for the application to get them merged into distributions? Um. I, I think that's what actually happens quite often. I mean, that's, this is what most of you, I, I actually, I don't know what most of you are doing. I'm assuming most of you maintain one or more packages. Am I completely wrong? Right. No, OK. So most of you, your work is literally to bring in the applications into the system. And I think that's actually the right solution for all the base applications. Do not get me wrong. I do not think that something like, like 90% of the core stuff that is open source should just be in the distribution. But then there's the crazy stuff, right? There's something like Subsurface is open source, but let's face it, we have maybe a thousand users worldwide, out of which maybe a couple of hundred are running Linux, out of which maybe 10 are running on Debian. I don't know. The, the, we do have some numbers, so those numbers are not completely made up. But my point is, if you have 10 users on Debian, and you have 10 users on Fedora, and I know we have a couple of users on Actually, we have a couple of users on Arch, and we have most of the Linux users seem to be on Ubuntu, which actually kind of makes sense, right? Because divers are not necessarily computer technical people. So, and Ubuntu has been selling to that kind of crowd. So if you have that kind of situation, does it make sense to have people inside every distribution package that application for that distribution and do so in a really timely manner when we're making major changes that is really important to users because without those changes, their dive computer does not work, right? No, it does not make any sense at all. So even for open source projects, bringing that project into a project like Debian is just waste of manpower. You guys have better things to do. Trust me, you really do. Subsurface is a fun application, but nobody should waste their life maintaining, oh, Maybe the maintainer is actually here. Oops. <laughs> but, but the point is, it, 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 I, I'm grateful we actually do have a Debian maintainer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did I screw that up? No. But uh, it, it's, this is an example of something where it would make more sense for us. Like, for Windows, we have nightly builds. And by we, I don't mean me, because I haven't touched a Windows machine in a long time. But Dirk Hondel, who is the real maintainer, builds basically nightly. And it's really convenient, because these users that have problems with a particular model of dive computer, he can make a Windows binary and say, hey, install that package and see if it fixes your problem. This is what you want for real users, right? For Linux, we can't do that. The Debian package is out of date. It's not a nightly build. There's no way to create a nightly build. The only thing you can tell these kind of people is, hey, take the Git tree and compile it and see if it works or not. And that works if you're people like us. But if you're a diver who's in Hawaii 
and has trouble with his dive computer and is running Ubuntu or Debian, uh, it's not really a s very good solution, right? So even for open source, I don't think uh, maintainer, uh, distros should maintain everything. You should do the core, and the core is still going to be thousands of packages, right? There's no question about that. And then we have all the commercial software, and Debian <coughs> is probably mostly people who really don't care. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just projecting here. Uh, what is Debian's feeling about, like commercial databases and, and stuff like that? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I'm probably talking to the wrong crowd, but some other distributions definitely have the whole thing with, no, hey, Valve is actually using Debian, isn't it? They started off using Ubuntu, but now they're using Debian, right? So even Debian should be aware of these kinds of commercial packages. And for them, they have to give a package. And right now, they have to pick not just a distro, but a version of the distro.